Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I want to share a Capture One tip with you that is especially useful if you're switching from Lightroom. Now one of the things a lot of people say to me is that they find it difficult to switch to Capture One because they find it quite difficult to get to grips with, especially for people who are switching from Lightroom. They find the user interface a little confusing and that can be certainly be the case. It is does have a learning curve, especially if you have uh, just switched from Lightroom and if you've been using Lightroom for a long time. However, there is something that you can do to make your life a little easier. It's obviously not going to solve all the problems uh, that you might have getting to grips with it, but it does make things uh, a bit more straightforward if you're switching from Lightroom. What this involves is uh, switching the interface around because in Capture One, the interface is actually very customizable and the kind folks who've developed the software have actually put in a preset workspace that is designed for people switching from Lightroom. So let me just give you an idea and show you what to do. So here I am in Capture One and this is the default workspace. So over here you've got my library and I've got all the tools up the top and then down this side we have uh, thumbnails. So that's the current project that I'm in. So, so what you do is go to the window menu, go to workspace and then go to migration. So the migration workspace is basically set up to mimic Lightroom. Now Obviously, because it's different software, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's actually not bad, and it kind of lays tools out in the same general layout that they are in Lightroom. Now, just switching the the workspace is probably not going to be enough. There's a few more things you can do to set it up just to make it behave even more like Lightroom. So let me just walk you through a few things and just show you where stuff is in general uh, in this kind of workspace layout. So first of all, down here, we have what would be the film strip in Lightroom. Now, when you switch this from the default layout, it's actually, things are a bit weird here. Uh, so what you need to do is switch to this one. So this icon here, this is film strip mode, and this will let you scroll from left to right. Now, I only have a few images here, so that's why you're not seeing them, because it's showing filtered. So down on this side, is the library view so again this is a little bit different so this would be your folders uh so in the, the the library module in lightroom this would be over here but you can't really separate them um there is a way to do it but i'm not going to bother showing you that and then here you have user collections which is basically albums or collections in lightroom and then down here you have your keywords uh, and then down here your metadata so on this section down here, we have filters. So filters is what's normally in the filter tab uh, on the film strip or in the grid module, on the grid mode, if you're in the library module. So if I go down here, you can see at the moment, uh, this is only showing me a few, but if I switch, because it's looking for a red label. So if I go down here to color tag, you see red is ticked on. So if I tick this off, that's now showing me everything. So now I can scroll across. So if I go back over here, um, I'll show you the different modes here. So the grid mode will give you a grid like this. Um, but if you want to most like Lightroom with the film strip, so you just hit this button. So that's the film strip mode. Okay, and then to filter by, say, star rating, for example, I can go up here to rating, and I just click on five stars. And of course, you can search in here as well, um, and that's like a quick way of doing it as well. And to get rid of them, you just click it again to toggle it off and that is toggling off all your your any of your filters um, if you want to get the equivalent of the grid view is is the keyboard shot shortcut is command option V um, which will switch to uh, the grid view if you're looking for this in the menu it's view and it is show and hide viewer so at the moment it's show viewer because it's hidden so if I hit show viewer that will bring it back and then hide viewer Okay, so let me just go back and back to the viewer for a minute. Okay, so up here then we have our toolbar, and this is kind of like um, the different modules in Lightroom. So this one here is, it's labeled as exposure, uh, but that's just kind of the way they've laid it out. So consider this the develop module essentially. So what they've done is for this workspace, they've basically put everything, all the tools in the same order that they would be in Lightroom. So at the top you have your white balance, then you have exposure, high dynamic range, which is basically shadow and highlights. Uh, clarity, again, um, clarity is slightly different in Capture One, but I'm not gonna go into that now. 
color balance. So this is uh, basically your color balance tools, black and white. Um, so for black and white, interestingly enough, the one thing they haven't put in here is uh, kind of the HSL tools, which is a bit odd. I'll show you how to add additional tools in a second. So you have focus, which is basically like a uh, your navigation tool. Um, and then we have sharpening, noise reduction, lens correction, vignetting, film grain. And then down the bottom, base characteristics, which is kind of similar to the calibration panel in Lightroom. So the next button over here is... This is generally only used if you're uh, doing tethering, so I'm not going to go into that now. Then local adjustments, so this would be kind of the gradient and the brush tools in Lightroom. So what would be the, I think it's called selective adjustments. Then over here is styles and presets, so this would be the presets that's normally over here in the develop module, so normally on the other side. And then this is process recipes, so this is kind of for outputting. Um, so this would be if you normally go into Lightroom and you want to export your images and, and you go to the export panel or you bring up the export window, this is basically all of that contained within here and you can create recipes which is the same as creating export presets in Lightroom. And then over here this is just your batch queue. So basically this is if you're exporting a load of images it, it'll show up here in the order that they're in and you can actually stop the queue if you want. Okay. So that's pretty much the basic layout. Um, there's a couple of more things you can do if you want to do if you want to. Um, so, for example, if you want to change the keyboard shortcuts, you can do so. So, as I said, um, switching between the grid and the viewer mode is Command Option V. But if you want to mimic Lightroom, you can set that to Command G. So all you do is go in and edit keyboard shortcuts, and I need to create a new one. So I'll call this. Lightroom. Okay. And then I want to go to find the right thing. So here I click on this and just close that and go Command G. Okay. And I hit close. So now Command G switches between the two. Um, the other thing you, uh, to know as well is you can add different modules and move them around. Um, so for example, as I said earlier, if I go down here to color balance, they don't actually have the hue saturation panel. So I can go add tool. And if I can remember what it's called, <laughs> uh, I think it's color editor. Yeah, so there's the color editor and I can drag this and put it in the right spot, which is kind of difficult given the way they've laid this out. So I'm going to put this over here for a minute. So basically I'm dragging this out, I'm just going to swing that up and I want it to go between the curve and color balance so I can just slot it in here and there we have it. So that's the equivalent of, of the HSL tools in Lightroom. Um, it's actually much more advanced but again I'm not going to go into that right now. So that's pretty much it. Um, the workspaces are very flexible in Capture One and you can basically uh, lay stuff out the way you want to. So for example if you wanted to do um, have your styles over here. You can go, I can create a new floating window. So you can do that either by right clicking or I can just go up here and go create floating tool. And I go down to styles and presets. So now I can have this in a floating window over here. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't let you dock it to this side, um, but you could move your window over and do something like this if you wanted. So you can kind of create a similar effect. I'm just doing this rather badly here, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And I'll put this back. But anyway, you get the idea. So and to close this, then you just go remove tool. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's fairly straightforward, like I said. Uh, you may find this more useful if you're switching for Lightroom, or you may actually just prefer the way it was. Um, it's no harm taking time to get used to the default layout because if you're following tutorials and stuff online, uh, it, they're more than likely will be from that default workspace. But if you find it's confusing and you prefer uh, working with the Lightroom kind of style layouts, then all you have to do, as I said, is go to a workspace and it's called migration. Okay, um, I hope you found this useful. It's just a quick tip and uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see more Capture One tips. And if there's something specific you want to ask, let me know and I'll try and do a video for it if it's something that I think will be interesting. Um, 
If you want to support more videos like this, then check me out on Patreon and subscribe to this channel and please like this video if you like it. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time.